Hello, I'm Anthony. Welcome back to the Essential Guide to System Configuration in Cubase 12. We're going to be having a look at the Media Bay today and not so much the data that's stored inside the Media Bay in terms of VST presets, WAV files, MIDI files and whatnot. I've already done a fairly comprehensive video on that. I'll put a link above. Now, today we're talking about how the Media Bay actually exists on the system in terms of where the database is and the various files that go to comprise the, the presets and information that we see inside it. If you're enjoying this series and you want to help support my channel, uh, check out the Patreon and YouTube channel member links below. Awesome way to do that. So first things first, where is it? I'm running Cubase 12 here, so I'm looking at my Cubase 12 64 folder inside the roaming uh, folder. We've already had a look at that in this uh, video series, but if we scroll down the list of files in this folder, mediabay3.db is the database file itself. You can see 814 meg of it. If I go to the uh, the factory version of this um, folder, so this is the one absolutely raw initialized without me touching a single thing, you can see that the media bay is just over 66 meg. So a pretty modest database when it's first built, but obviously I've got all of my audio files and configuration data from several years worth of accumulation, and this is the size it is at the moment. During this video today, we're actually going to open the database itself and have a look at the data behind the scenes. We're not quite ready to do that yet. Let's carry on with our introduction a little bit more. So firstly, I want to talk about the folders that we configure. When you first load Media Bay or when you first install Cubase, uh, power it up, open Media Bay. The two most important folders are going to be the VST sound and factory content. That's where all of your pre-built configuration information is. Now, here's an unfortunate thing about these folders. They don't display correctly. If we have a look at the VST Fat Sound folder, for instance, can you see all of these empty checkboxes? That implies that the VST Sound folder is being completely ignored by Cubase, but it isn't. Let's open it up again, and I'll go to this top level folder, the Acoustic Agent SE. If I click on there, you can see several files inside the folder. Can you see this one called Brothers in Need? It's currently set to two stars. For reasons that will become apparent shortly, I'm going to set it to four stars. The important thing to note is that this Brothers in Need file um, is in our database right now. So it's available as a Groove Agent preset. MediaBase says it isn't. If I go all the way up to the top, so by clicking on the All Media selection, basically my search is now going to span the entirety of the Media Bay. And here's the Brothers in Need preset set to four stars, as I showed you earlier. There's only one entry for it, and it's in this folder here. So even though Media Bay is reporting this folder as unused, it's not true. Now, this is something that you need to be careful of because you can very easily lose data. If you think, hang on a minute, why is that folder not being ticked? And you tick it explicitly. At the moment, there's been no explicit change that preset's still there. We can still see all of the files inside the Acoustic Agent folder. The problem arises when we take that folder back out of the media bay, because now when I untick the box, it's going to ask me this question. They say, do you want to remove this folder from the database? If I say yes, Brothers in Need is going to disappear. Watch. So now media bay doesn't see that folder. I can go right up to the top of the tree, search for Brothers in Need, find nothing at all. And this is where things get a little bit murky, because what I'm going to do now is close Cubase. I haven't done anything at all. I'm not pressing save. I'm just closing Cubase and I'm going to reopen it. I'll be back in a minute. Hello again. I've just loaded Cubase back up. You can see Media Base just initializing. And that's pretty perfect timing because it just came back online. And lo and behold, Brothers in Need has reappeared. Two interesting facts. One, where the hell did that file come from? Because I just told Media Bay to take that um, Groove Agent folder away, and yet it's here. Two, why is it rated three stars? The last time we saw that file, I'd rated it four stars. And this is your problem. These VST sound and factory content folders are basically undeletable. Every time you reload Cubase, anything you've explicitly removed from Media Bay is going to come back. 
The issue is that if you explicitly remove those folders from the media bay, they are going to be purged out of the media bay database. When Cubase re relaunches, it basically scans through all of its internal files. I'm going to show you all of this stuff under the hood shortly. Any files that it doesn't find, any configuration folders that it doesn't find in the media bay database, it reinitializes them with its default values. And the default rating for this preset is three stars. The reason I'm going to such lengths to explain this to you is because you might decide one day to internally rate. Let's say you rate every single preset across the Steinberg suite of products. If you inadvertently deselect the, the root VST sound folder from your media bay, in other words, purge the entire database of all of the VST files, you'll lose all of that configuration information, any ratings, any changes of category, um, styles that you might have added to the VST pro, uh, presets, all gone. And when Cubase relaunches completely silently without you knowing that anything's happened, it's all going to get reinitialized completely to scratch. So first rule of thumb, never make any change to these folders inside Media Bay if you can possibly avoid it. Don't take them out, don't add them back in, just leave them completely alone. VST sound and factory content should not be messed with because you can't delete them anyway. It's just a, like a false positive. Secondly, if you're gonna make any configuration changes to these files, particularly with ratings, that's the most common attribute that we would change. Make sure you back up the Media Bay database because it's so easy to lose information. It's particularly easy to lose information when we have the option to so easily deselect these folders. Remember when I clicked on that little checkbox earlier and we saw this message saying, do you want to remove it from the database? Don't ever tick this box saying, please don't ask again. That's your only safety net. If you inadvertently uh, tick one of these checkboxes at a root level folder that's currently ticked and you inadvertently throw an entire um, section of your database away, this confirmation box is the only protection you've got. Don't ever tick that box. Okay, rant over. Let's uh, single click on this file and have a little bit more of a poke around. So the Brothers in Need preset, we're currently set to rating three. Um, I'll set it back to rating four. And over on the uh, right-hand side, it's a little bit behind me. I've got a path here. Can you see this VST sound? Basically like a, like a GUID kind of thing got this very long string of characters and numbers, and it starts with A673A. Now that doesn't mean anything. You're not gonna find a file anywhere on your computer that refers to that physical file. So I'm kind of curious where these VST files live. Now we know that it's called a VST sound file, but you can actually identify the location of this thing, the A673A file, uh, using one of the XML files in your preferences folder. So here's our roaming folder back again and the XML file that you want to open is called contentmanager.xml. Let's have a look in there and I'm going to search for A673A. Here's the GUID and if we have a look just above this entire block of text here is all referring to that data file and up above you can see that the path is X Groove Agent FCP SMT152. Let's go and find that folder. Here's another instance of File Explorer opened on the X Groove Agent folder. So I've got all of my Groove Agent data files currently stored in a folder called Groove Agent on my X drive. And I'm looking for FCP SMT152. And there it is. So that's the physical file on my hard drive that contains the preset that contains, amongst other things, all of the data referenced by this GUID. So when you're looking at these presets inside Media Bay, they're always going to be referred to by these big long strings of characters. That's not a physical location, but you can find it from that content um, XML file. So as you can probably imagine at this point, I really don't like mysteries. If you show me a big long GUID, I want to know what the physical file is that that data refers to. So here's the correlation. The fact that it's stored on the X Groove Agent location is down to my Steinberg Library Manager. Again, I've done a pretty comprehensive video on setting up Cubase in terms of how the, the Library Manager works, but basically you've got these detailed sections. If I click on any of these detail options, you can see that this is where 
um, I can figure where all of the physical data files are stored on my computer. And as you can see for the Groove Agent tab, they're all in the X Groove Agent uh, location. You can move them just as a matter of interest really easily by selecting this move and basically pointing them wherever you want them to be. I don't want massive files like this living on my C drive. I like to keep my C drive operating system clean as much as possible. Now then, I say as, as much as possible, but it's not completely possible to be 100% C drive clean because some of the stuff in these factory folders is unavoidably linked to your operating system drive and there's nothing you can do about it. So for instance, I've just selected one of the factory content folders here. This is Cord Pads. Let's select one of those files and have a look at the VST sound um, GUID that that's related to. So now we're looking at D8D57. Let's have a look in our content file to see where that is. D8D57. Here it is. And this is an internal file used by Cubase. I can't move it. I don't have control of it from the, uh, from the library manager. And sure enough, C program file Steinberg Cubase 12. So there is nothing I can do about this file. Let's have a quick look at it. Here they are in my program files folder on my operating system drive. And again, this is the VST sound file, this 83 meg file here that contains basic stuff like, in this case, chord pads. But you'll find that lots of this factory content, default um, Cubase stuff, lives in that folder. Let's have a look at the database itself. There's nothing like looking at raw data to really understand the thing. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna open this Media Bay database, but I can't do it while Cubase is open and I'm talking to you through Cubase. So what I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna copy the database file I'm just going to paste it somewhere innocuous. I'm actually going to put it in this cache folder. It really doesn't matter. I can point it pretty much wherever I want. I'm just going to open this database and I, know, I now know that Cubase isn't directly accessing this file. So I've launched an application here called DB Browser for SQLite. Okay, it should be said, this is advanced stuff. Don't open databases and start messing around with this stuff behind the scenes if you don't know what you're doing but I was a database designer for 20 years, so I should know what I'm doing. Uh, I'm gonna head into that cache folder. I'm gonna open this media bay file. And now we can see all of the information uh, in the database. It's what's called a relational database, but it's actually not very relational. All of the interesting information is stored in what's called a denormalized table. This media table is basically just one colossal table containing all of the information. And here it is, you know, that now this application is very good at um, paginating data and, and displaying it to you, but there are 132,000 rows in this database and each row is almost completely empty. So this is what's called a flat file. Um, okay, let's, <laughs> let's move on. It's not how to design a database. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have a look for uh, one of those uh, presets that we were dealing with earlier. Remember Brothers in Need? Now this isn't gonna be a SQL lesson. I'm not gonna particularly worry about the specific sy syntax that I've used. Basically this query scans the database looking for any files that contain Brothers in Need. And here it is. Remember I set the rating to four stars. Let's uh, page across a little bit. And eventually we're gonna get, there we go, media rating. That's how many stars are gonna be represented in Cubase. Now don't forget, I'm looking at this database in a copy. So I could make the change in the media bay in Cubase and it wouldn't, represent, wouldn't update here. This database is basically fixed for now and forevermore. But it's interesting to see that all of this information is stored in this media bay database. When you deselect that folder, this record in the, in the database is deleted, it's purged out of the system. When I then relaunch the application and Cubase reinitialize the database, adds these records back in with the default rating, then that's when this stuff changes. But just bear in mind that any changes that you make on the system, they're gonna be made here. Now I have dabbled in the past with adding my own um, bespoke categories and subcategories to Cubase. It doesn't really work very well. Cubase doesn't like 
you're messing around with the internal configuration. And obviously I can't recommend that you do something that I've not been able to prove works. All I can say is that it is actually all here. All of the information that you see in Media Bay is stored in this database in all of these various columns. With that said, I'll close the database and let's have a bit of a browse around the user folders. I've spent most of my time talking about the, the Cubase system configuration folders and they are hugely important, but I've got a ton of stuff in this, uh, in this database as well. So let's have a look in this computer. Can you see this very small number of orange ticks? That's because I've manually gone in and removed every single folder that Cubase thinks I might want in my database, but it's actually got wrong. When I looked in my like documents folder, for instance, or on my C drive, there were multiple folders that didn't have any presets or audio data in them at all that I was remotely interested in. And so I've called it down to the absolute bare minimum. Whenever I open these things, you can see now that it's only actually uh, anything that's, that's directly related to Steinberg that I've actually got ticked. And the reason for me saying this is because as I'm scrolling down this stuff, you'll see vast swathes of emptiness, and then it's just the Steinberg folders that have been ticked or the user folders. One of the most important folders is in my documents folder. Uh, the, there are two actually, the Steinberg folder and the VST3 presets folders. They're both really important. I'll deal with the, uh, presets in a separate episode because that's quite a big subject in its own right. The reason for me going on so much about this and getting all of this nice and clean is that eventually when you've got it clean, you can go up, up to this little media base settings drop down, which hopefully you can see, yes, you can. And you can engage this option that says hide folders that are not scanned, turn that on. And now our media bay is beautifully elegant. It's only showing me the folders that I want to see. And all of this stuff is valid properly populated data showing me exactly what I want to see with no chaff. The last point I'll make today, and this is a pretty obvious one, you're likely to have a folder somewhere that contains all of your audio data, all of your sample data. As you can see, I've got a dedicated um, SSD drive for that. So this is my sample data drive. I have the entirety of my core samples folder. This white tick says that everything in that subfolder is selected and I've actually set that up as my one and only favorite in Media Bay. So the only place that I want to jump to explicitly if I'm looking for something is my core samples folder. Uh, so I've got it set up as a, as, a, as a favorite. Okay, definitely in need of a cup of tea now. That was pretty deep. Hope you enjoyed the episode. Uh, please hit like if you did. I'll see you for the next one. Thanks very much for watching.